Okay, so here we are roughly 10 minutes into the XTAR S1 runtime testing. I uh, just wanted to highlight to everyone the temperature, since this is a beast of a light, there will be potential concerns with uh, the heat driving three XMLs, uh, XML U2. So with that said, currently my Fluke logging form shows it to be roughly at about, oh, I don't know, 102 or so, 103. So not too bad actually, but of course, bear in mind, I do have a fan running here to create some airflow over the, um, the light. So with that said, I'm going to try to pinpoint where is the highest temperature. Oh, there we go. I just saw 103 there for a second. Okay. It's roughly where I've put the thermocouple right around there, uh, which is pretty much the last fin, uh, between the last fin and the control ring. So as we uh, span down towards the head, you can see it also hits about 103 down there as well and starts just cooling off a little bit. But again, the highest point is pretty much where I've placed that thermocouple right there. All right, to give you a little better idea of how this um, entire contraption works, as you can see, it's really just three 90 degree elbows. All right, um, sorry, wait for the camera exposure to catch up here. Okay, so there's a female to male connection here, then a female to female, 90 degree elbow again, and one final. Uh, male to female again. Uh, light sensor is actually clamped on here and as you can see through there it's actually just diffused light. It's nothing, um, you know, no beams. I've already tested this and vetted out at PF18 as well. Um, it does not necessarily favor throwers. If it did, you know, a uh, deaf EDC which is a SIF Eric would have actually, you know, probably thrown this way off the charts. So, um, but as you can see about roughly now 11 minutes into this run um, it's holding steady now, which is which has been shown to uh, be the case for the S1. It runs regulated for a short period of time before just taking a, a, a dive. So, well, there you have it.